Today we're going to be doing a brake job on a 2017 Ford Fusion. And what we found is the lug nuts have a stainless steel cap that's pressed over the top of the lug nut. And that cap is somehow not the right size anymore. So a three quarter inch wrench, three quarter inch socket will not fit on it. And a 19 millimeter socket will not fit on it. And a 13 16 socket is way too sloppy. Can't remember what the other size one is. 21 millimeter is way too big. What we had to do is we had to take a three quarter inch impact socket and we literally had to drive it onto this nut all the way down here and bypass that little stainless steel shell that's on here. So today we're gonna show you how we did that. And then also for jacking this car up off the ground, there is a certain jacking point that you have to find under here. And in front of the rear wheel, if you look underneath this, this uh, plastic piece right here where my finger is, there's a little molded arrow and that's where the jack is supposed to go. Well, this floor jack, great big pad on here. The only thing that sticks down from the car is a piece of sheet metal that's vertical. So you're only pushing on two tiny little points on a little sheet metal fin that's easily gonna be folded up. So what we've done is I made a block. Look, it says fusion on it. How cool is that? So this block is roughly two inches by two inches. It's a little, a little shy on this dimension, but that's what I had laying around. But if you had a piece that was exactly two inches square, that would work, and this is six inches long. So you can see it fits right across there real nice. So we're going to jack this side up and then we're going to show you how we get these lug nuts off of here that are compromised. And just for future reference, if you take a look over here, we had to buy some new ones to replace the old one. And this is the White Knight brand from Advanced Auto Parts. Very high quality stuff and I'm being very sarcastic about that but they do fit m12 by 1.5 is the pitch they're a little bit longer here but that doesn't matter at all because this shoulder is not what does the work it's the taper the taper is what locks the wheel onto the hub of the car so this shoulder doesn't matter but these are all machined and I think they're chrome plated so we don't have to worry about having that issue with the uh, the sheet metal cap that's basically crimped onto the lug nut it doesn't need to be there to me it's ridiculous so we got these new ones we're going to put those on and uh, we've already done this side over here you can see those turned out real nice so now we're going to do the other side and show you exactly how this is done okay so what we're going to do is we're going to get these lug nuts off of here and we're going to do one at a time that way i don't have to jack it up safety glasses gloves be safe use an impact socket and we're going to kind of reach in there and just kind of feel, you can feel it get started where it wants to start right there. And then we're going to just basically pile drive this thing right home. Put that in the vise. Yeah, that's the hardest one that ever came out. This is a flip socket I got from Harbor Freight. It's pretty slick. It's got a, the square part is in the middle. So you've got a three quarter and a 13 sixteenths on each side. And it comes with a little extension. And it also comes with a metric one that's I think 19 and 21 millimeters. We'll get this started by hand. Take that all the way in there, bottoms out. I'm gonna use the torque wrench set for 100 foot pounds and that's in the manual. So let's do a click. There we go, that one's done. Now we're gonna do the other one. We're gonna do it a star pattern, just like you put them on. I'm gonna move this out of the way. That's my free kerosene heater that I got from alongside the road. If you go to Applied OCD, you can check out the video where I got that thing up and running. I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep it or not, but after today, I think I'm gonna keep it. Temperature in the garage is a balmy 55 when it's probably 15 it degrees, maybe? Cold. It sounds different when it bottoms out on that shoulder. Typically, when I tighten lug nuts up, I prefer to use one hand to back this up so that it doesn't peel off of the wrench when you're pushing down on it. And I use my massive body weight, as you can see here, as a mechanical advantage 
and I push down on the torque wrench instead of pulling up because that puts a lot of strain on your shoulder, especially if you're up in the 150 to 200 foot pound range. We're gonna use the weight of my body, my massive body here. I'm gonna back this up so that it doesn't twist off and do this. So back up, pushing in this way. Click, there you go. Just gonna do a round robin follow up. Make sure everybody's been hit. So I just did all five lug nuts. We changed them all out. An impact socket, an impact wrench. You can do this and replace them with some of those high quality nuts from Advanced Auto and you'll be in business. And get rid of those stainless steel covered nuts that swell up. I, I don't know what it is. I think that maybe there's some slight corrosion or something that just causes that stainless steel cap to, to swell up over time and then the sockets won't fit up. Here's how you do it. We'll be back and we're gonna show you how to change brake pads on the rear of the 2017 Ford Fusion. Thanks for watching and leave a comment if you're interested and we'll see you next time. All right, I made a new block that was taller this way from here to here to, re to better reach up inside this, behind this plastic. So we're gonna go ahead and raise the car up now I apologize for the lighting, it's not the best, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, car's starting to go up. I think it could actually be another half inch taller. We're gonna go ahead and use this one for today, and for future, I'm gonna make a, a taller one uh, out of some oak or something like that that's a little more crush resistant. We'll use that in the future. Cars up off the ground. We're going to take the wheels off, show you how to put the parking brake into maintenance mode so that we can begin taking the rear brakes off. So now we're going to put the car in maintenance mode for the parking brake. And this is a push button start, so you got to do a little bit different process. So the way you do this is you push the push button one time. And then you push the gas pedal all the way to the floor and hold it. And then you push the button here for the parking brake down and hold it. So while you're holding all this sort of stuff, you reach up with the other hand and you push the button twice. And there's all kinds of, you can hear the motors back there moving. And then it says parking brake in maintenance mode. So now when everything is all done moving, now you can release the foot, the gas pedal, and the button down here, and we should be good to go. So we're gonna start by taking these springs off of here, little spring clips. There's that. Then there's a little dust cover back here. Looks like that. We're gonna take that off. We're gonna take this off. And then we're gonna use I believe should be a seven millimeter Allen wrench, as you can see right there. Tekton, seven millimeters. Somebody on the internet said that you need a 35 millimeter socket to do this, which I don't know where back here you would even put a 35 millimeter socket because there's nothing that big. I think that's a little bit of misinformation that's out there on the internet. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to use the 7 millimeter Allen wrench. I bought this little hex bit socket. It wasn't very much. It was, I think it was six or seven bucks. So those are the caliper retaining screws. And look at that, seven millimeters. It ain't no 35 millimeter, that's seven millimeters. This should come off of there somehow. In order to get this caliper off, I think I'm gonna to have to use the handiest tool in the toolbox, and that is the old beater screwdriver. Everybody should have one of these. This is really ugly. It's been beat up, abused, rusty, ground off, broken off. But these things are the most indispensable tools you can have around. Booyah! There it is. 
I'd say this one here it's getting right down there just about nothing that one not so bad so of course you don't want it to hang by the by the wires or anything or the brake hose so we're just gonna lay that up here out of the way and then we'll get the pads out of there so it looks like this one comes right off there's that one and then See, here's where that beater screwdriver comes in. Look at that. Would you do that with your good snap-on screwdriver? No way. Use the El Cheapo. Got that part off. Now, we need to retract that brake piston in there. And this might be a little bit of a challenge because I normally use a C-clamp, but I really don't want to press on this motor over here because I'm afraid if I put a C-clamp here, to up here, it's probably gonna smash the daylights out of that motor and destroy it. So we got the motor off. You can see the little stub shaft sticking out here. So we're gonna put a socket over that and press on this housing here. And then we're gonna see if this piston will retract into the caliper. Oh, it's going, it's going nice and easy. That's it, she bottomed out, good to go. Alrighty, as we got this off, there's an O-ring right there. To seal this up we are going to take that off and I'm gonna put some o-ring lubricant on that okay got a little o-ring lube on there there's that and put the motor back on like so line them up and this one is an m6 socket head cap screw which takes a five millimeter allen wrench there's one, there's the other. Plug our connector back in. Okay, that's good. Now we'll go ahead and put the pads on there. The inboard one has the spring on it, and the little hoopy doo spring, so we'll put that in here. And that should go down in that, oops, wrong way, duh. Let's just push against this, probably just keep it from rattling. And then here is the outboard pad there. And we should be able to slide this caliper back in place onto the rotor. Come on. Easier said than done. Okay, it's almost impossible to do. Ha! There you go. How about that? That's where it should be right there. Let's get these pins polished up. You can see there's a little bit of rust on there. So I got a piece of Scotch-Brite and we're gonna chuck this up in my drill. Old Milwaukee. We'll do both of those. Those are nice and clean. Pretty as a picture. Now we'll get some grease and put on there and we'll put everything back together. Bendix Special Brake Lubricant. This is older than I am, but it still works. It's just kind of a white grease. So we'll put some on there, slather it up a little bit like so. And then we'll see if we can get this started in here. Okay, there's that. That one started. A little grease on that one. All right, that one started. There's that. We'll put our little plastic plugs back in there. There's one. Two. And then we gotta put our magic spring back in place. And then I think this side is done. Oops. I don't know, what do you think? Looks pretty good. 
We got some good meat back in here. You can see, well, you can't see it. Eh, you might be able to see it. There you go. Perfect. There's our new pads down in here. Lots of meat on them. We're good to go. All that's left to do is put the wheel on. You don't want to see that because it's just like putting the wheel on every other car. Brakes are complete, and now we're going to return the car to its normal driving mode and take it out of the uh, brake maintenance mode. So what we're going to do first is my subject is going to push the engine start button one time and then push the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor. And then we're going to lift up on the parking brake lever, lift up on that and hold everything, and then push the button up here twice. Once, twice. We can hear all the motors running. Once when everything is done, then we're going to release, and it looks like everything's good to go. All right, there you go. That's how you do it. There's nothing on this job that requires a 35 millimeter socket. Maybe on something other than a 2017 Fusion, but not this one. Seven millimeters takes off the caliper bolts. A five millimeter Allen wrench takes off the parking brake motor, and that's it. That's really all you need other than a screwdriver and some other goodies and a lug wrench and all that stuff. There you go.